Hey guys, hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Shitaj aka The Rustic Wanderer. In the previous vlog you saw I finished the entire Karun Kheros Trail 85 days. It was long and tiring but very interesting and unique experience. I really enjoyed it and then I checked myself into a hotel. But getting here was quite an adventure too, getting to the hotel. Here's a clip of how I got here. Check that out and then we continue the walk further. Okay, so after I finished at the Ruka ski village, I was kind of a bit lost. Found this really friendly gentleman from Helsinki who was just biking around with his daughter. And he was graciously kind enough to me to, to bring his car and he hit, let me hitch a ride. And this is the third time in Finland I was able to pull this off. This is so amazing. Would you like to introduce yourself for the vlog, please? Yes, I'm Yoni. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> nice. Okay, thanks so much Yoni for being so Thank kind you. and thanks also for offering me water on such a hot day. <laughs> You've been uh, very generous, so... Thank you. Thanks so much now and have a rest. nice day. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, thanks to the <laughs> kind people I meet around here, I finally managed to get to the hotel and then I'm staying in the Huka ski village. So I'm going to explore this a bit after I get some rest. And I'm gonna take this gondola and then go up the mountains somewhere there. So actually, I ended up on the back side of this. So you could take a gondola and come up the mountain and end here. And then you can be at the hotel. But I didn't know how it would work because when I was looking around, there was no taxi, buses, nothing running. And it's a midsummer Johannes time. So everything is either closed or very few people. So I was trying to figure out how it works, but was too tired to do the math. Anyways, all in all, checked in and here's a mini room tour. So this is a nice sofa, comfy bed, pretty big room, nice TV. That's backpack, uh, some closets, and here's the bathroom as well. So there's a nice shower and a huge bathroom. So the staff here was very kind, um, they were very generous in explaining everything to me and uh, very polite and also I got an upgrade to a superior room so the view from here is going to be really amazing. I'll try to see if I can get the time lapse of the midnight sun at some point but overall super impressed with the room. Uh, there's also a sauna which I'm going to use now and then try and figure out a place where I could eat something. Good morning from the Ruka village guys. So yesterday when I checked into this uh, Scandic Ruka Hovi, uh, this is my first day with the Scandic group of hotels by the way. Um, I was really tired and I just took a really nice shower to freshen up after the hike and then went downstairs to the in-house restaurant and ordered some local delicacies. Uh, the food was really delicious and the staff really took their time to explain everything, how the food is prepared, what are the ingredients, just in case if you have any allergies or restrictions or anything. Um, they also give you some recommendations of the most popular local delicacies so you can make up your mind what is it that you like. And I also ordered this uh, strawberry mocktail that was very delicious to get the sugar rush going, to get some energy back. And um, to top it all off, I had a creme brulee too. And that was a very unique creme brulee because it was topped with cloud berries. I've never had a creme brulee with something like that. So if you look at it from the surface, you can't really tell what it is, but it was very delicious. Um, it's a nice and sunny day today, a little cool breeze going on. So the, I can see the cable car is already running. There are some people down there. So first, let's go have some breakfast, get some food in the system going. Then we go out and explore. I've been passed out for the past 12 hours, so I think I've recovered enough to go out, uh, explore a bit around the area, the Ruka village. So breakfast first and then we go out exploring. Okay, so breakfast is done, uh, out and about to explore the Ruka village. This red tower like thingy in the middle, like mini watchtower, this is very iconic. I've seen this is almost all the photos and videos of Ruka ski village. That's Skandek Rukahovi, which is where I'm staying. 
and right in front is like a water park and there's a gondola I can see going up there so try and explore a bit about what's up top the mountain just maybe <laughs> no more hiking after the gigantic Arun Kiros I think I'm done with hiking for a while just gonna look around but this entire circular area around this place is full of different kind of hotels and uh, apart hotels so it's like this is another one Oh, there it says uh, Kuksa restaurant. Uh, this is this was uh, recommended by the ladies I met up, up up top at Valtavara. So they mentioned that the food here is really good. Maybe uh, if I have the time, I might try this. There are also these rental shops that rent out mountain bikes and skiing stuff because there's a mountain bike trail up there. So if you want to do that, there's also that possibility. But this water park looks cool. There's one similar to this in Olu as well but the water was really cold so I haven't had the chance to try it yet it looks nice though very relaxing time to try out the gondolas then this tower does really look cool with the sunlight on it in the bright red color and I'm somewhere up top on the fifth floor in this building so the views are nice and right here is the entrance to the gondola station so finally in the gondola it's a triplet of gondola cars try to get in on the first one to get a better view see you later ruka village time to go enjoy some scenic views and the cool thing about this is they mentioned that you can get up to the top of the mountain get off walk around as much as you want uh, hop on back go to the other side of the valley get off and walk around as well and then come all the way back up and the return trip costs about 12 euros 50 so it's not super expensive and i also asked about this uh, summer sledge which sounds fun uh, i've done something similar at the great wall of china where you kind of uh, slide down on a metal sledge all the way that would have been fun to do but the only problem is that uh, that goes to the other part of the mountain and this goes to the other part of the mountain so I had to pick one, so I went with the gondola car ride for now. But anyways, this should be fun to explore. Oh, there are kids playing frisbee golf there. There's a frisbee golf course here. be the mid station there so probably I'll get off there and explore first and uh, that's the metal slide route so it's a different part of the mountain yeah it's a fun ride been a while since I took a gondola the glasses have a bit of scratches on it so I am not sure if the view outside is or not but at least i have the whole gondola to myself so total value for money feels good to be seeing this mountain from a distance oh yeah this green thing is what i was seeing from Vantavara, so i have a feeling that this was visible from up top there and this uh, thing you covered with white plastic i don't know what that is maybe some sort of a greenhouse or whatever but yeah, this was the view from Valtavara. Huh, cool stuff. Fun to think about it that I climbed all the way up here. This is really fast. Okay, let's get down and enjoy here first. So this is called Sarua Top and it's a midway point. Let's explore what there is to see here. That was a cool halfway ride. Nice sunny weather. Start to look outside a bit, walk around, see what there is at the Sarua top. But the one thing is super cool I found about these gondolas is they are like fully automated. There's no person watching you get on, get off. You scan the QR code of the ticket you purchase down there and then you just hop on when the cable car is here. And the good thing is at the start point it stops for a couple of minutes to ensure everybody has gotten on and off. Um, and then it starts with like a buzzer sound and then it starts going. So it's very safe and secure that way. Really cool. Yeah, as you can see at the Sarua top it's now stopped for people to get on get off and then it will start with the buzzer sound after a couple of minutes 
So it turns out that you don't necessarily have to take the gondola to come all the way up. So I don't know if you can see that, but in the distance, that's the Ruka village where I started from. And this, there's a trail coming up all the way. So you could literally just trek all the way to the other side if you have the energy. I'm just recovering from the hike from yesterday, so I'm not trying to push myself. I'm taking it nice and easy. Um, so that's why I'm using the gondola but I just saw family going from here and also there are these uh, MTB riders so I'm seeing them like enjoy nice uh, biking trails down here so that's really cool mostly the gondolas are full of people bringing their MTBs all the way up and then enjoying the biking trails downhill that sounds like a fun activity to do and the place where I got the ticket for this were also th I think there's a possibility to rent out these kind of bikes and skiing equipment and things so this place mostly is a uh, popular for a skiing destinations so if you are one of those who loves like snow sports maybe this is worth checking out for you but I just so happened to be here because I finished the hike here so just looking around and enjoying the views oh there's a zip line too look there's a person and that's where it finishes nice ah, they have a cushion landing right next to the gondolas coming in that's really cool this place has a lot of activities and there's another person coming in in a different line nice that sounds like fun okay let's go down and see what's in the ruka valley got here just in time as the cable car trio came up this time sitting in the last one just for fun and different kind of views so right next to this dome there's a pond and some cars down there i think that's where i finished after karun kiros so trying to figure out how to get up was a bit difficult but um, I was speaking to the staff when I was getting the ticket and they say like there is a way to get here uh, There was in fact a gate um, that says Karun Kiros behind the ticket encounter uh, It's still a bit of a mystery to me how it works to get to the village after the hike But anyways, uh, Yoni you were the guardian angel that saved me and got me to the place So thanks so much for that. I'll be very grateful and thankful uh, for that for that gesture and yeah now i'm gonna go explore the ruka village no valley uh, village is on the other side valley is on this side and on this side when the cable car is going downhill sometimes it speeds up for like a second or so and you start to get like goosebumps for a little bit but we are almost at the valley let's uh, walk around explore see what else is there and if i'm able to understand how it works to get to the village from here then i'll share more information okay so now i get how this uh, karun keros was supposed to work so what you're seeing behind me there is actually a bus stop though i have never seen a bus but that's just a landmark for you so the way it works is uh, you finish your trail somewhere there and the cars that are parked there is the car parking where i was at yesterday uh, luckily i bumped into yoni so if you have a generous soul that is able to help you then you can do that or you could come all the way that, look for this, and then turn right from here all the way, look for this building, that's your landmark. And right behind this is where the gondola is gonna start. So that's the start of the gondola station. I'll bring you closer. And then from there you go on to the other side to the Ruka village. Um, supposedly that's where you, most of the hotels are. So probably if you're staying here, that's where you will be staying as well. So let me show you a closer look of what the start point looks like. So this is the start of the gondola station from Ruka Valley. Then you go to Sarua Top and then you go down to Ruka Village. So the opposite route of what I took. So these small tidbits of, you know, how to get to the trailhead, where do you finish? How do you get your accommodation from there? Uh, these were kind of missing in the information when I was looking up and, you know, surveying for myself when I was doing the trail. So it was also one of the reasons I tried to capture these kind of things that, you know, uh, were kind of uh, got me stuck and then I had to figure a way out of those so if you found these useful and you're watching my vlogs and doing these trails or if uh, some of your friends or family are about to do these trails uh, feel free to share it with them because that's the whole purpose of making these vlogs you know adding these information that were I found would have been useful but were missing so you know let's help each other out and if you find these kind of things useful give these kind of videos a big thumbs up so I know that you appreciate my efforts right and yeah now I'm just gonna 
gonna look around what's in the valley walk around a bit because yesterday i was totally tired um oh and on that note you don't necessarily have to take the gondola again if you still have the energy after the hike which i didn't but if you're still feeling adventurous then you could you know hike up all the way up to sarua top go down from there and you'll be at your accommodation so you get a little bit more of extra hiking uh, miles if you really want to do that but anyways uh, that apart let's look around see what's in the valley here oh there's also an accommodation here ruka ski in ruka valley so probably if you just want to stay here right after finishing this is the closest accommodation i can see so that might be a good thing for you so it didn't look like there was much to do on that side so i'm going back to the village side the valley side is just uh people with cars and just going to their own places and got summer cottages and stuff by the rivers So I think I'm going to explore more on the village side and I while boarding the gondola on this side I realized that they the board sign says gondoli I don't know why is that the typo didn't feel like a typo so if anybody knows why that is the case comment down below and let me know but either way uh back to Sarua top almost and then over to the other side back to the village soon so it's a very short ride just a couple of minutes but very convenient if you are tired and you just want to take it easy so let's see what the village has to offer So this is cool behind me is like a mini shopping mart there's a subway k market which is a local grocery store uh, there's also a local shop where you could buy local souvenirs and uh, local food uh, yesterday on the way in yoni mentioned uh, pizzeria that's about 4 or 5 minutes away from here uh, since he recommended it the idea today for lunch is uh, i'm going to grab a pizza take away and then go down by the lake and enjoy like a nice picnic out there Let's see if I can retrace the step and find that pizzeria again and hopefully it's open. So among these housing places that's where the Ruka village is. There is this uh, this is the bus stop where all the ski buses, the airport buses and even the bus I'm going to take tomorrow is going to stop from. So this area is uh, very well set up. That's the gondola right there and that's my hotel behind that red tower like thing very close. So all of this segment is uh, very conveniently set up because it's a very popular tourist destination during the snow winter season uh, and even during the summer some of the things are working but most of the things are closed off because it's not a peak tourist season plus it's a mid summer days going on so not everything would be open when you get here found the place it's pizzeria ruka it's very close just place the order for the pizza for take away uh, local delicacies as a topping instead and i just came across this cottage behind me this would be cool place to spend some time at just waiting for the pizza to get ready and then i'll head over to the lake and close by to my hotel which is also close to the lake there is an ice cream parlor and it's a nice and warm day so after the pizza there would be desserts they also have gelatos here but to bring it all the way there it's probably going to melt so it's not going to be fun anyways i'm going to take the ice cream there and then and should be fun to enjoy it that way but uh, anyways yeah thanks yoni for recommending this uh, got to try it out by the lake i'm guessing the flavors are good i'm usually not a big fan of pizzas but since you recommended it i get uh, i get a feeling that it's going to be good anyways but uh, yeah thanks for recommending and you were right it was really close it was really easy to retrace my path got here in 4 minutes just like you said just got the pizza um you knew you were right the pizza is really good and thanks so much again for the recommendation i absolutely love it and this is the view i'm enjoying it by the lake side trying to cool down in the summer and then after pizza as i said i'll hop on over to the um ice cream parlor grab an ice cream and also chill by the lake and refresh and relax
Good morning guys, it's 2.43 a.m. and I'm up and about already to capture a beautiful sunrise. So, it's uh, today's the day when I check out, pack up and leave. But before I do that, I wanted to say a couple of things. So about the pizza that I had, uh, that was called a La Ponne pizza. And the reason why I chose that was because the toppings were not only from local, but also it said that they use a local squeaky cheese, which really caught my attention and I was really tempted to try it. Actually, the cheese does squeak a little bit. So if you do want to try something unique, uh, do give that one a shot. Also, uh, there is a statue of a Finnish Olympian cross-country skier um, dedicated to him because he's belonging to the region of Kusamo. So he, it's, a, it's in his honor. I walked past that statue when I was going to the picnic spot, but I didn't know who that person was, so I read up about him a little bit. And while I was coming here to capture the sunrise, there was a reindeer just grazing in that hillock behind me, and it kept following me around for a bit, and then it wandered off. Um, so that was really cool. Also, uh, for the past few nights that I've been staying here at the Skandik Rukahovi, uh, I've been using the sauna facilities there. It's quite cool actually. It's in the neighboring building and you have a tunnel connecting the main hotel building with the neighboring building. So you go down to the third floor and then you walk over. Um, and while you're doing that, it's kind of starting to feel like a bit of a James Bond movie, like you're out on a treasure hunt of some sort. But uh, the sauna was amazing. It's like a very rustic looking feeling inside. It's all wooden kind of changing rooms and wooden sauna. They are gender separated and they are with a key card access. So it's very safe and secure that way. And it's quite clean as well. So well, that was very useful. And yeah, that helped me recover quite quickly. Uh, all the body soreness is gone. Uh, and yeah, I've been sleeping pretty well uh, here. The beds are very comfy as well for that matter. And I've been chilling in the balcony, enjoying the views, uh, having a great time. All in all, it was a great trip. Uh, thanks to the Skandik Rukahovi for such a great hospitality. It was really nice. Uh, Pizzeria Ruka for the amazing pizza on my last day here. And yeah, um, after I'm done watching the sunrise for a bit, then I go back, take a quick nap, wake up, pack up and leave. So that was it for this vlog. Um, I leave you with some cinematic shots of the uh, hotel reception area. Uh, I was chilling there while I was watching a tennis match. So enjoy those. And after I'm done here, I'm off to another adventure. And you'll know more about it in the next vlog. This is Rustic Wanderer signing off. <laughs>